Admiral's Log, August 2nd, 1940. Our foray into the North Sea has been both a success and a disaster. While we were quick to sink the German battle cruiser Ostmark, we found ourselves at a grave disadvantage against the mass of torpedoes that the German heavy cruisers sent out. The Corazza San Spiridon was lost. The heavy cruisers Santa Maria and Varese were able to save as many survivors as they could in the limited time that they had. The Germans got a swift revenge for the loss of their battlecruiser. While I was working on the refit of the Littorio class battleships, I decided that we're going to need more warning against enemy torpedoes. The Germans cannot have us at such a disadvantage ever again. We will create a scout force destroyer which will go ahead of the main fleet and warn us of any problems. Simply relying on Unita Maglioris is no longer an option. We need more variety. I have ordered our naval architects to draw plans for a new destroyer class immediately. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 4 of the Italian 1940s campaign. After a fairly disastrous episode 3 where I lost one battleship, I have to make sure that that doesn't happen again. I need to make sure that we have a screening force, which is why I'm going to be designing a destroyer. So, let's go to ship design, new design, and let's see what sort of a destroyer would be useful for this role. We have uh, quite a few options. We have the destroyer 3, 1500 to 2000 tons, we got to 2400 tons, 2450, and even so much as 3500. For a ship like this, which is mostly there to screen against torpedoes, I think a modern destroyer leader is a bit much. The destroyer 3 is probably sufficient for the task. And since I want to focus a bit more on larger ships, I think this should be good enough. Now my cruisers can do pretty decent speeds, so let's make these a bit faster. Um, I think gear turbines 1 is good enough. We don't need these to be all-powerful diesel boats, for example, at 19 million each. Uh, nor turbo electric at 25 million. No, they'll just be cruising along with geared, team, geared steam turbines. Main tower. Um, the best torpedo spotting that I can muster, which is, I think, advanced tower 10. 65, 62, 60, 57. Yes. All right. It's not just going to be a platform that spots torpedoes. It's also going to be a platform that's capable of doing some damage by itself. And I think it's going to be a pretty... A pretty boring <laughs> destroyer in that sense. But let's see. Its main job is to escort. So it'll be between, let's say, the heavy cruisers and the enemy. So it's going to be capable of lobbing out torpedoes because it'll be probably broadside. So let's say a quad on the bow and a quad on the stern. Would that work? Still makes the ship a bit heavy. Yeah, let's put the bridge in the middle of the ship, why don't we? What could possibly go wrong? Um, how far can you push that back? Yeah, no, that makes sense. From here, we can definitely see the torpedoes coming towards the stern of the ship. This is fine. There. Balanced. Now I just need to get a funnel in there. Interestingly, funnels need to be between the main tower and the secondary tower, so I got a lot of space to work with. And the ship is pretty quick. How much engine efficiency are we going to need? A bunch more than that. Balanced boilers. This is the Thin Funnel 3. There, 100% engine efficiency. We still need a couple of guns on this thing, just to make it useful. Push this further forward. Aft balance is a bit much at this point. Maybe just make it a bit more standard. Main guns. Fivers. That seems like a really big turret for this hull. It's just a 5 inch gun. It's not that special. Huh. Okay. Um, yeah, we might be able to put... Nah, that's a bit much. We're going to need a bigger barbette for that. Does this fit? Yes. And it fires right over the torpedo tubes. So it should have a very good firing angle. 
We still have a pretty hefty afterweight offset. 12 currently. Is it that torpedo launcher that's the problem? Pick these 21 inch oxygen. Mm. Yeah, why not oxygens? Well, because they're easier to spot. If I make them electrics, we got the 12.7 kilometer range, which is not good for a destroyer. No, we're going to go for oxygens so that we still have the range. Um, if I put this here and I put this further forward and put this over there. Hmm? Oh. Okay, so apparently that's no longer a problem. Alright. That makes no sense. Normally, the game says, no, your funnels have to be between the main tower and the secondary tower, but if you force the game to not have that, then it doesn't complain too much either. What if I go for another turret there? Because these torpedo tubes are far heavier. This is 25 tons, this is 114 tons. So I'll probably have to put that further back. Put this back, put this back, put this back. Put this here. Still an aft weight offset that that's bad. That's bad? Nah, come on. Surely we can do better. What if... What if... No, the beam doesn't necessarily help me here. Hmm. I could lower the draft to make the ship cheaper. I don't need a very stable firing platform. Because all I need is a torpedo spotter that's capable of not taking a hit. So capable of, well, mostly trying to stay low profile, which a low draft would do. Less flooding chance, more acceleration. If you get hit, you get a bigger water spread chance. Or water spread speed, so that's not good. Less operational range, though. I would probably have to boost this. And I still need to adjust some other stuff. I need to make sure that they have a high-end sonar. Um, yeah, I'm going to give them radar rangefinder 1. Although 2 doesn't matter too much, because these towers are pretty cheap. Okay. Stereo rangefinder. And I'll do some balancing. A little balancing and slight overhauls later. This is the design that I have. I made sure that they have these 8 torpedo tubes amidships so that they have both pretty good firing angles. And as it turned out, one medium angled funnel was enough to still get my 100% engine efficiency. We got the secondary tower there, the main tower here, and they are carrying four 5 inch guns which still seems like they're a bit big for this hull, but they are going to allow me to hit targets with both high explosive and armor piercing, depending on what is required. These guys carry the high explosive with uh, HE capacity shells. So that's the HCHE, which is just one step up from incendiary. This way I can still damage most targets easily, and I'm thinking destroyers. If the destroyers prove to be, oh, sorry, if the enemy proves to be not using destroyers but light and potentially even heavy cruisers, then at seven and a half kilometer range, I can still pen about seven inches with my armor piercing, because they are carrying the capped ballistic type, uh, type two shell. I could boost this even more by going with super heavy shells, but I don't think it's not going to be that useful. Although. I say that, but I'm going to have a ridiculously high muzzle velocity like this of 1,023 meters per second. Yeah, actually, that's pretty good. If I can push the reload up, I'm now firing every 11 and a half seconds. Again, it's just two 5-inchers, two 5-inch turrets, so four 5-inch guns. But they have very nice firing angles and should allow the target to be taking fire, depend or mostly regardless of what angle I'm using. 21 inch torpedoes, oxygen fueled, stereoscopic 5 rangefinder for long range firepower, same for the radar rangefinder 2. We have, of course, group 4 armor, Babette 2, double hull bottom, some anti flood systems. Um, as for propulsion, I didn't give them a whole lot. Uh, it should be just about sufficient to make this thing work. And can I push this? No, I cannot push that. I might be able to make the ship a bit 
wider, thereby improving its, no, actually decreasing its operational range. Reducing draft also means that you're going to be less of a stable firing platform, but also reduces the price by about 5 million while increasing the range. It's a very sleek destroyer. It's turning circle 392. It's not stellar. 372, let's give him an unbalanced rudder, and we're at 298. That's more like it. So it's a very sleek ship. About 12 million, which is very much within the design specifications that I would want. Oh, I'm four tons too heavy to get 14,000. Oh, it's fine. We'll do two and a half, and we get auto loaders. Yes, we can. Pushing the reload down to just below 10 seconds. 9.8 seconds. Good. I'm happy with this ship. This is the Dardo class of destroyers. Now let's order a couple of these to make sure that the fleet is properly protected. How long is it going to take to build? Seven months. I can get behind that. Um, let's send 10 of them with the rest of the fleet for 17 million per month, which means I'm going to be negative for a while, but that's fine. And I also still need to build another battleship, so this number is probably going to go down even more or up, depending on how you want to look at it, but I'll just reduce the tech budget a little bit. As I was trying to overhaul the Latorio class of battleships, because, oh shit, I did it here again, didn't I? I gave them maximum high explosive. No, standard ratio. Standard ratio, good. Um, as I was trying to overhaul the Latorio, I ran into a problem. Because the game says, this thing, this main tower, is too far from the previous place. Which it is not. But for some reason, the game really does not like me adjusting this ship and is going to cause all sorts of issues. So as much as I like the Latorio class, I think it is time to build a new battleship so that I have, well, a better platform uh, as well as something that potentially has better sonar and maybe a better capacity of getting out of the way of torpedoes because we'll probably be seeing the Germans again pretty soon. So new design, and the first thing I'm going to do is add the, let's say, oh sorry, uh, what sort of a hull do we need? Um, hello, where's the hull? New design. There we go, it was going to stick to the old hull. We can go as high as 72,500 tons on this one, but I don't think I need that. The Germans have proven to be very good sniping units. I might come up with a really weird ship for this one, just because I can. Like a modern battleship with very low displacement, 55,000 tons, so I can keep it pretty cheap as well. Krip 4 armor, a serious torpedo blister, anti-torp 4 should really reduce the amount of damage that I take by minus 50%. Uh, we're going to give you gear turbines, oil, probably something like induced or balanced boilers. We got the Modern Tower 2, which gives me a 70% torpedo spotting. And if I increase the beam of this ship, I can probably put a very healthy amount of secondaries on it. Light secondary tower, torpedo spotting 32, 28. Yeah, it just gets progressively worse from there. 38, 5. Oh, this might be the better option. Could you move forward a bit so that I can add this? There we go. Not too bad, not too bad. Okay, main guns. I'm thinking... What's the role of this ship? Um, to defeat heavy cruisers, I'd say. But in that case, battlecruiser might be better. The problem is those German battleships and their seriously good capability of doing damage to my ships because they got a lot of firepower. They really took me by surprise there. Oh shit, this doesn't fit. That is pretty sad, because I really don't want to make... No, I don't have room for main guns this way. Okay, we're going to go with a new hull. This one then. And this one's just a whole lot sleeker. We'll take this. Lower displacement. Terribile seems like a pretty bad name for a ship. Uh, up the draft. No, actually... What if I make a really bulky ship like this? 
It's very nicely angled, the size of this ship. <laughs> That's too heavy? Wow. Now that is pretty terrible. Um, reduce to 10. I cannot go above 67.5. And again, I'm making the ship too expensive and too big. No, I'm not going to do another battleship just yet. I first want to see how the rest of the ships do. Now the battle cruisers are refitting. They'll be done in a month. So effectively, the only ship that we have at sea right now is the Latorio itself, as well as a whole bunch of heavy cruisers. And the light, cru sorry, the destroyers are going to come up in about seven months. Now, since I'm not doing very well on finances, let's reduce the tech budget a little bit, and we should still be able to get quite a bit of research done. Okay, moving on. Let's see if we have any encounters. The Germans lost a transport and the Austro-Hungarians lost a transport in the Eastern Mediterranean. Yeah, it's probably because I'm blockading the shit out of this area. And they're probably not too happy about that. Wow, the port of Pula has so many ships in it. 13 heavy cruisers. There's three battleships here as well, in Spalato. And Kataro has eight heavy cruisers, a light and a destroyer. Maybe I should focus on just knocking out austro hungaria first, austria hungary because it might be the might be the easier way to go, essentially. Mm. Considering that huge fleet of heavy cruisers, I want to order a few more of my uh, Flight 2 of the Giacchino class. We're going to delete this. I'm going to build... Really? I need to build the base ones and then refit them? Okay, fine. Ship is overweight? Oh, did they patch this and made it impossible to build this ship? Yeah, the thing is too heavy. Okay. As well as this tower being poorly placed. Oh, and now, the, now everything else is poorly placed? No. I refuse to believe that. Slightly less torpedo protection and we're fine. I a little bit of balancing later, we have a new class of ships. This is the Concezione class. And these guys are much more capable of dealing damage because they get more shells. They have the capped ballistic 2 armor piercing ballistic capped shell, which allows these to deal damage against basically anything. High explosive will take care of the smaller ships at 15,000 meter range. We can pen 3.2 inches, and the closer we get, the better that gets, although not as quickly as the armor piercing, of course. And we now have a standard ratio of main shells, which means we carry a very much an even load of high explosive and armor piercing, which is previously something we didn't have. The ships that did have to give up some torpedo protection in the form of torpedo protection 2 now instead of 3. So save that design and we're going to order up a few of those because they'll probably be needed. Get me 4 of those. That's another 20 million. Um, I don't mind. This is fine. Okay, let's go look for a fight. Now, much to my surprise, for several months nothing has happened. At least not over in the Adriatic Sea. What I'm going to do is pull my ships back to port and then send more ships to that port, ideally, and start building an invasion fleet because I want to take out these Austro-Hungarian units. So let's see. Um, we've got five battlecruisers in Bari, so that's where all of you are going to go. All of you move. The new destroyer class has been finished, so we can also send those to Bari. The battleship has been repaired. That is the Andrea Doria. We can send the Fernandino and Varese and Santa Maria with her as well. I'm not going to be playing around in the North Sea just yet. Because I want to make sure that I control this area properly first. What else? I have more destroyers here somewhere. Where did you park those? Fleet, where are my destroyers at? Um, Cagliari, Ancona, and Naples. Okay, here's four destroyers. We're all gonna go to Bari. Boom. Um, where are you guys? La Spezia was empty. So you sent them to Cagliari. 
I'm going to keep one heavy cruiser there, but send two more destroyers there. Because if this really kicks off, this is going to be a hell of a fight. Okay. They all keep losing ships. Especially the British. They don't seem to be doing so well. And that is concerning, because apparently if the British lose... Jeez, their GDP growth is good. Uh, if the British lose, we all lose. If the French lose, we all lose. Don't have your allies lose the war. Okay, um, I now have my two battleships, five battle cruisers, six heavies, and eight destroyers, all in Bari. Let's go to the least defended port of Kataro and send everybody out there. Yeah, I know. Everybody's going to go there. Hold on, the battleship. Yeah, we got the Littorio and the Andrea Doria. We're going to go right there. And your objective is to invade. We're going to annoy the shit out of these Austro-Hungarian units. At least that's the plan. I'm very much hoping that they're going to invade Kataro and kick out all these heavy and light cruisers. Go on. Fight me. I have an interesting series to make and you're not really contributing much. Good lord. Come on. Many, many months have passed. It's April 1942. I still haven't gotten a single encounter and my ships have been out at sea for probably well over a year and a half now. I even set them to just sea control, but it seems like the Austro-Hungarian fleet is just, well, properly bottled up in Pula, Spalato and Kataro. In the meanwhile, in the north, my allies have definitely taken control of the North Sea. Um, I think the Germans, too, are keeping their ships in the the ports, because they're not doing anything. We got five heavy cruisers here. We got uh, one light cruiser there. One high light, sorry, three lights and one heavy there. A heavy there. Two there. Two DDs there. A DD there. A DD there. <laughs> the French are freaking everywhere. A battleship from the British here. Two light cruisers. Two light cruisers. A light cruiser. A battleship. <laughs> another two battleships. It seems that the... <laughs> <laughs> Both the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians, um, they have too much power projection to not get blockaded. But effectively they are blockaded because they don't make any forays into enemy territory for some reason or another. Maybe it's because they have ships everywhere. But if you look, for example, to Kiel, there's four battleships, a battlecruiser, four heavy, six lights and six DDs here. If that all just decides to charge this French fleet... They're going to be in trouble. They will die. Because four battleships, especially those heavy German battleships, against, well, basically any battlecruiser, that's not going to go well. So I'm really wondering how this is going to go down. Because we're all just building ships, but nobody's fighting, apparently. I'm just seeing created plans, created plans, retrofitting, laid down new hulls, laid down new ships. I, too, have been building new ships, and I now have 12 battlecruisers, and I'm building another 6 destroyers. But I don't know where to send them, because there's nothing out here that needs fighting. So I guess back to pausing the recording, and continuing to hit next turn until something exciting happens. It's now October 1943. Still not a single encounter, and my sailors are getting properly bored aboard their fleet. Um... What I have been doing in the meanwhile is getting filthy rich. I have now almost 1.5 billion in cash. And I have been upgrading my shipyard to 74,500 tons. Since I have nothing better to spend my money on, I'm going to invest another 70 million, which is peanuts at this point, into building a bigger shipyard. But with 74,500 tons, I should be able to get a nice new battleship. Um, the reason for getting this nice new battleship is that the Germans while bottled up, have not stopped building ships, and they're now at 71. The French and the British are still everywhere. Nobody's fighting anywhere. Um, this is effectively a Cold War. Anyway, they have... Whoops, I have eight battleships. Austro-Hungarians have four, and I only have two. So we're going to come up with a big ship that's capable of whacking modern battleships out of existence. This is going to be the Ercole Vittorio. Sorry, Vittorioso. And we're going to give them 20-inch guns. Why? Because 20-inch guns are fun. That's why. 
We have the 20 inch gun at Mark three. And I'm thinking just a platform potentially with uh, ABX should be sufficient to knock out virtually anything that it comes across. The focus of this ship will be sniping. So I think they are too expensive to get too close to the enemy. We're going to need a taller barbet there. Extra tall superimposed barbet. Boom. And um, this is probably going to be a very expensive ship. I'm going to give it all sorts of armor. I'm not going to give it a whole lot of torpedo protection because I'm expecting this ship to stay far, far behind the position of the rest of the fleet and make sure that it can just lob these 20-inch super heavy shells most likely at the enemy. Uh, right now, they don't seem too impressive. Let's say I want to be fighting at 20,000 meter range. I can hit or I can pen about 12.2 inches of armor, but... Now I can pen 29 inches of armor. And if I boost the type of propellant and go to super heavy shells, now I can pen 32 inches of armor. Considering the design of this ship, I might go for a Nelson-esque Italian ship. That could make for a pretty interesting design. I wonder, is this possible? Four weight offset is currently fairly dramatic, but we're not there yet. Um, whoops. Secondary tower. What's giving me the best long range accuracy? 23. This is only 7.9. This is four and a half. Yeah, I have a secondary tower is the one that we're going to have to go with. Over on the stern, I don't think I can fit another one of these behemoths. No, it's too big. Let's see. All or nothing armor scheme. All the anti-flood. Uh, reinforced bulkheads maximum. Triple hull bottom. We're going to give you gear turbines. Maximum auxiliary engine. To a... Actually, this one's generally better. Aux 3. Electric batteries. I want to give you a generation 3 radar. A super range finder. Auto loaders? Wow. I'm surprised that even fits. Still, the reload is 88 seconds. But again, if you get hit by these things, you're most likely going to be dead. Probably very dead. At 15,000 meter range, we're looking at 46 inches of pen. Maybe that's too much with these guns. 44. 42. What if I go for standards? What if I go for light shells, in fact? That boosts the reload to 69 seconds. And then we go back to the Capitalistic 2. And we're once again about 40 inches. Yeah, I think this is good enough. AP shell weight, 1976. The HE shell weight is far lower. But that's with incendiary shells, which pen absolutely nothing. If I go for a nose fuse. Um, base fuse. What if I make it an HE spammer? No. Not that feasible. Because even with a capped ballistic HE shell at 15,000 meters, you're pinning about 10 inches of armor. No, never mind. We're going to go for nose fuse. So I can still blow away a heavy cruiser when I need to. Funnels. Probably not going to make it very quick. Ship's overweight. Yep. Kind of as expected. Oh, I'm doing 16 knots. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> not very quick. Not very quick at all. Ooh, I'm gonna have to save on something. But what? Oil? I don't have any any sort of a secondary here. Um, the six inch guns do not really fit. I wanna have an eight inch gun just here to balance this thing out. The eight inch triple is the biggest that can probably reliably fit here. And it almost completely balances the ship out. That's nice. I don't need that much range. After weight offset 0 0.3. Uh, natural boilers are fine. If I go for diesels, that does save me quite a bit of weight. That's good. 
Okay, let's do that. And these things will be always escorted. Now, initially with the campaign, you couldn't do that because this simply didn't have the task forces, but now we do. So I don't need a ton of secondaries. I can put them on, these four inch guns. But this thing is probably not going to be very heavily protected. And, well, maybe more deck armor would... Well, who am I trying to fool? Um, deck armor. I'm looking at a deck pen at 20,000 meters of 31 inches. You're never going to protect against that. It's just not feasible. I need to put this to, let's say, 18 half. Four deck to six inch, half deck to six inch. Let's make these a bit easier to turn. Main deck to eight inches is too much. Seven and a half. Hold on, the ship is too heavy on the stern. That's interesting. Reducing main belt, increasing four belt. Because that's the part of the ship that will be facing the enemy. These things are dead slow, though. That is a problem. It means that they will not be able to get out of trouble uh, anytime fast. That could, could prove an issue. If I want to fix that and make these things go, I don't know, 28 knots, I'm probably going to have to sacrifice quite a bit of weight somewhere else. But that speed could save my life. 30 knots. When is the big tip over point? Ooh, that just jumped 30 million. 30 knots is fine. Let's see, where can I save weight? A lower auxiliary engine. Better oil, yes. Less range. Don't need all that range. Where am I going to save this weight? Double hull bottom. Reinforced bulkheads, one. There we go. Fixed. Potentially at the expense of having this ship take more hits, but let's hope it won't. Uh, we're going to go for a standard ratio before I forget that again. Slightly too heavy. 14 inch main belts. Uh, I really don't like having to save this much on all sorts of systems. Nine tons. And this is really the maximum of my... Um, hold on, is that the maximum of my shipyard? No. Maximum of my shipyard was slightly bigger, I thought. Oh, it's the maximum size of the hull. Right. 29 knots. There we go. That fixes it, and I can probably still get the shafts. 28.5. 28. 28 is fine. Okay, that's the ship. This is the Ercole Vitorioso class. Uh, sort of Nelson-esque. Few secondaries. We got one funnel on the stern. We got a huge tower up front. We got eight 20-inch guns to deal with enemy battleships and a couple of 8-inch on the stern in case we need to turn tail and sail away from the enemy while still shooting them. How long is that going to take me to build? Probably a fair while. Build ship, build time, 27 months. Well, considering that nothing's been happening for the last couple of months, I don't mind. Even with building four new battleships, I'm only down 300,000. Jesus, I could probably build double that. I will build double that. Uh, yeah. Boom. Done. Okay. Um, I really hope I'm going to have some sort of encounter to show you, otherwise there's going to be a pretty... <laughs> Pretty Cold War episode. Okay, nothing yet has happened, but something was pretty amusing. Watch this. Austro-Hungarian Empire created plans for new design. The Ladislaus class battleship. Okay, that's July. One month later, they go, nah. Austro-Hungarian Empire discarded design of the Ladislaus class battleship. Okay. Austro-Hungarian Empire created plans for the Heinrich class battleship. Nah. Austro-Hungarian Empire decided to declare or discard the design for the battleship. Now they're putting down a new battleship design. I really wonder if we're going to see in uh, September this <laughs> that they're going to discard the Würzburg. Well, the French have decided to get a couple of new destroyers as well as light cruisers. 
I mean, everybody's building up their fleets, but nobody's doing anything with them. I think the campaign AI might be getting a bit confused. Uh-oh. <laughs> the British have too big of a fleet. Um, yep. Austro-Hungarian Empire decided to discard their designs and decided to build a new one, the Erzherzog Ferdinand. Ugh, oh, idiot. Okay, what is the status of the politics situation here? The British have an active fleet of 57 ships. I have 42. They got plenty of naval funds. I don't see the problem. I mean, I also have plenty of naval funds. And my naval budget's even bigger than that of the British. Not even sure how. Maybe because of the transport cap? The Austro-Hungarian Navy is not doing that well with 34 million. The Germans, 127 million. 71 ships, 36 ships. They're not doing anything. Go! Now, this just popped up. Alliance signed between Italian Empire and British Empire. I thought we've been allies for the last five years. But apparently that's something new. And I didn't agree to anything. The game just said, you, yep, okay, boom, you now have an alliance. We already had an alliance. The campaign is acting a bit wonky. That's not really doing it justice. In the meanwhile, I'm just building my fleet. Those new battleships that took 27 months to build? In three months, they're all going to be ready. It's... it makes no sense. Let's see, what's a huge port that I could harbor these things in? None, really. Gaeta. Uh, we're going to put five of these behemoths in the port of Gaeta. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. And the rest, you can sort yourselves out. At this point, September 1947... We've been at war for about seven years, and we've had two battles. One was over here. Uh, sorry, three. One was over there with the Germans, and the second one, or the third one, was over there with the Germans as well, when I encountered their battleship. Nothing's happened, but something really weird has happened to the British. Their funds are pretty sizable. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but I think that something's not quite right with their naval budget. Their naval budget is minus 36 million per month. Uh, they're spending a good amount. Um, but they got all sorts of funky money printing thing going on. Uh, versus the rest, which is fairly normal. The Germans have a massive crew pool of 29,000 sailors. My crew pool is 20,000. But they have more ships than I do. I'm not even building ships anymore. I'm just waiting for my next shipyard upgrade of 88,500 tons, and I think this campaign is getting properly broken. Which is sad, because, well, I know it's a beta, but I was expecting a bit more than this. The Austro-Hungarian Navy, which has not left port in about eight years, has blockaded me. How? I get that their power projection is bigger than mine. Yes, their fleet apparently displaces a lot more than I do. But... I'm not really sure how. Because we got the same 10 battleships. Oh, they also, uh, the Germans have some issues with expenditure. Um, the Austro-Hungarians have the same amount of battleships. I have 12 battlecruisers, they have one. Battlecruisers generally provide more power projection. They have 12, sorry, I have 12 heavy cruisers, they have 21. I have more destroyers, and they have, well, a few, and I suppose that if you combine these, you might get the same power projection as 16 destroyers. But they blockaded me? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Um, not that I care, because I'm still at a plus 5 million. So I think that the whole blockade is not that important. It's really not going to hurt me that much. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'm getting up to 95,500 tons of displacement. Although I don't think I can displace more than 92,500 tons with my biggest hull. I think the whole campaign is a bust at this point, but I'm just very curious to see where it's going to go. Okay, I think this campaign has finally given up. It is August 1949, and the game has been frozen for a while on building new ships. I think it's the French which are completing construction of several of their French warships, but exactly what they're doing, I don't know. Now, this is definitely not the way I had hoped, <laughs> slash anticipated, that the Italian campaign would go. Uh, we're going out with a bit of a whimper here. 
but it is a beta version. Keep that in mind, it is a beta version. So all of this stuff will get fixed. Uh, Nick from Game Labs is already aware of these things and I suspect that they might already be working on it. When that patch is gonna come, I don't know, might be here by the time you see it, might not. We shall see how they, well, how quickly they fix it. Uh, still, I will definitely be doing more campaigns and hopefully getting actual some encounters this time around. Probably next one will be as the Austro-Hungarians because that supposedly is making for an extra challenge. But we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, I'm sorry to have this one go out with a whimper, but still, um, I enjoyed playing as the Italians, and I will do so again quite soon. See you then.